this with you. Yeah. Yeah, be better. <laughs> There'll never be a vote like this. That's a great question. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm... System, system check. They don't let us abstain. I'm too. strongly opposed to <laughs> whatever it is. Why am I not checked in here? Come on. Except on a street corner where you're the adjacent property owner. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be. Almost called again. No I'm not kidding. They called yet. Oh my. Tell Brad to get you off his speed dial, man. Seriously, get Barack off his speed dial. Tom, you're going to do your report during the um, uh, your uh, priority items. Where are you at? Oh, remember that. <laughs> you remember that was an ad for some. Uh, oh, that was not that one for the uh, Constitution, Daddy. Yeah. Do you remember what? Where are you at? That was the text. Where are you at? Why don't you let, let me know what like that is, Ashley. That was like a beeper. This was, this was a different version of that. It was the where are you? At? <coughs> I don't know. It's a zippy name too. Yeah, obviously so zippy. I forgot. Okay. Oh boy, all these good people. Who are these people? I got that. Thank you. Espana? Will you come and read the... Um, Espana. Sovereign. And you have a few parts of the skin. Me at the province of Russia. Sounds Russian. <coughs> That's not working. My iPad is not working. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Durham City Council to order. <clears throat> 7 p.m. on September the 17th, 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'd like to ask you to please first join me in a moment of silent meditation. Thank you. And now I'll ask Councilmember Reese to please join us and uh, lead us in the pledge to the flag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. If it's your practice to do so, and if you're able, please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you very much, Council Member. And now, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor Shul? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Here. Council Member Alston? Here. Council Member Caballero? Here. Council Member Freeman? Present. Council Member Middleton? Here. And Council Member Reese? Here. We're now going to move to our ceremonial items, and uh, we have two ceremonial items tonight, tonight, even though one of them uh, is only one of them listed, and we're going to begin with a neighbor spotlight recipient. I'm going to ask if Rita Van Aggs will please come forward. Did I get your name right? Great. And do you have family and friends who are with you? Why don't you ask them to come on up? Please join us. Come all the way up. Great. <clears throat> Can you all come on up here with us? And we'll get we'll get the pictures. Yeah, we'll definitely have time for photographs. Laura made sure of that before the meeting. Rita Van Aggs is the recipient of the Neighbor Spotlight for the month of September 2018. The Neighbor Spotlight Award recognizes community members that have gone above and beyond in volunteering their time to serve the community. This month, Rita Van Aggs, a resident of the Five Oaks neighborhood, was nominated and selected because of the wonderful work she has done in her neighborhood, including, but not limited to, 
initiating and maintaining the Five Oaks Neighborhood Watch to foster a safe community, hosting popular national night out events and neighborhood parties to help neighbors get to know each other, organizing community trainings on 911, CPR, and active shooter situations to help residents stay informed. Congratulations, Ms. Van Eggs, on being the September Neighbor Spotlight for the City of Durham. And I want to thank you for all the work you do to improve the Durham community. And just want to tell you how much we on the City Council and the City of Durham appreciate you. So thank you very much. Thank you. I guess I should, I guess I should say first that I'm going to present you with this fabulous certificate <laughs> and ask you to say a few words. Thank you. Uh -huh. So it's just um, a pleasure, really, to be in Durham that has awards like this for neighborhood recipients. Um, not every community in large town does this. And so I just you know, want to commend Durham for, um, for making citizens um, feel special and the opportunity to serve um, and participate with um, neighborhood safety programs. Um, it's been great to really coordinate with um, the Durham Police Department and um, the PAC-3 group especially. So, and, and my fabulous neighbors, thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> Laura has asked us to come down and take a picture. So, okay, go ahead and take that one first. <laughs> Got it? My personal yeah, photographer. Okay, come on, neighbors. We're all going to go down, and, and Laura, you're going to take our picture. Is that right? Our second presentation, is Ms. Emily Walker here? Ms. Walker? Okay. Uh, well, we've had a little bit of a, a uh, situation today. I don't know if you noticed, but we've had a hurricane. Uh, this was supposed to have been presented uh, today at the, uh, this, this uh, re regarding Constitution Week and Constitution Day, uh, was supposed to have been presented today at the Durham History Museum at 3.30, but that was canceled. Uh, and so I decided I would go ahead and do it tonight. I'm sorry Ms. Walker couldn't be here. I was hoping she would be. Uh, but I know that uh, the weather is what it is. But I'm going to uh, ask uh, my council colleague, Renetta Austin, to please come and uh, read this proclamation uh, for Constitution Week, Constitution Day, and Citizenship Day. And we'll, we'll send this by mail to Ms. Walker. Uh, whereas our founding fathers, in order to secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and their posterity, did ordain and establish a constitution for the United States of America. And whereas at the culmination of months of deliberation, debate, and compromise, on September 17, 1787, the Constitution of the United States of America was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And whereas September 17, 2018 marks the 231st anniversary of the signing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention. And whereas through all its changes over the years, the Constitution's foundation has endured and adapted and remains the supreme law of our land. And whereas Constitution Day and Citizenship Day are celebrated on September 17th each year during the celebration of Constitution Week, September 17th, through September 23rd. And whereas the adoption of the Constitution and the independence guaranteed to American citizens, whether by birth or by naturalization, should be celebrated by appropriate ceremonies and activities during Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Shull, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim September 17th through September 23rd, 2018, as Constitution <coughs> Week, and September 17th, 2018, as Constitution Day and Citizenship Day. In Durham, North, in Durham, and encourage all, excuse me, and encourage and call upon the residents of Durham to observe this day to bring together governmental, civic, civic social, and, and educational leaders to conduct ceremonies and programs that bring together community members to reflect on the importance of active citizenship, 
recognize the enduring strength of our Constitution, and reaffirm our commitment to the rights and obligations of citizenship in this great nation. Witness my hand and the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, the 17th day of September, 2018. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, Councilmember Austin, and we will mail that to uh, Ms. Ms. Walker. Uh, and now I'm going to ask for announcements by the Council, and I'm going to start with an announcement uh, before uh, turning it over to others. We are welcoming tonight a very special group of young people uh, from Spain, from Madrid, Spain, who are here with us, and they're uh, also their chaperones as well. And their hosts, families from Durham Academy, students and, and uh, parents from, adult, uh, from Durham Academy who have welcomed these students. Uh, this is a group of exchange students that are part of an exchange program that's been going on for several years between Madre de, Dia, de Dios uh, in Madrid and Durham Academy. The exchange happens every two years with a focus on language ac acquisition and cultural immersion. Uh, the students who are visiting us, there are 10 of them, they're 14 and 15 years old, and I'm going to read their names, and I'm going to ask you to stand as I read your name. I know some of you all may not, not all of them may not be here, but you'll just stand as I read your name, and if you'll just per, per, forgive my pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> before I read your names, though, I'm going to uh, ask Council Member Caballero uh, to give perhaps a better welcome than I was able to. Hola, mucho gusto. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Bienvenidos a nuestra ciudad. Uh, y que les vaya bien. Y que lleguen... Uh, seguros a su casa de vuelta. Gracias. <laughs> I'm now going to call your names and ask you to stand. Enrique Arconada, Paula Garcia, Jose Ruano, Pablo Garcian, Marco Grabel Grabelsek, Beatriz Sam Salmon, Alberto de Benito, Javier Diaz, Julian Sopena, and Jorge Martin. We're really glad to have you here. Thanks for being here. And also want to welcome Isabel Rios Torres and, uh, and Allison Maddox from Durham Academy who are here having coordinated this. Thank you. Thank you all very much. You can be seated. And uh, let me just say that we welcome you to stay for the entire meeting. Uh, if you don't want to, you won't hurt our feelings. Okay. Um, any announcements by members of the council? Any other announcements? Council Member Caballero. So I have several. Um, so uh, Hispanic Heritage Month kicks off on September 15th, and it will go through October 15th. So here's a fun fact. One of the reasons that it starts on September 15th, it's because it was Honduras's, Costa Rica's, El Salvador, and Guatemala's Independence Day on September 15th, mm -hmm. and then it was Mexico's uh, Independence Day uh, yesterday, and then it's Chilean Independence Day tomorrow. So Feliz Patrias Fiestas. Great. Thank you. You have other announcements as well? Oh, okay. I, mean, I can give you all a little history lesson if you want, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd, have to reach, I'd have to reach, like, you know, back 20 years. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. That was a good, fun fact. Mayor thank Shul, you. as a follow-up, I just want to share that we, that I have proposed a proclamation for Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month. Great. And we'll bring it up at the next. Super. Wonderful. Thank you. <clears throat> Other announcements? Uh, Councilor uh, Ross. I just want to take a minute to um, thank all the members of our staff uh, for the tremendous amount of work that they've put in in the last week or so in response to Hurricane Florence. And uh, just in my gratitude, because I know it's been a lot of long hours um, and you know, you've needed to respond across a lot of different areas. So I just want to thank you. Much appreciated. Other announcements? Uh, just another, uh, just sharing, I had a um, very informative time at the Congressional Black Caucus uh, this last week, uh, their 48th annual legislative um, convention, and I really appreciated the opportunity to be there and to meet with our congressional members of, of the Black Caucus. 
and uh, hearing from a lot of the community on the issues that matter to us in this city. So I look forward to bringing more of those conversations here. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, the comment about the hurricane reminded me um, to just bring up that, you know, Durham really, we, we got lucky. We kind of got sideswiped by the storm, but our uh, friends and neighbors down east were not so lucky. Um, there are a lot of hurricane relief efforts that are happening right now for folks um, in eastern North Carolina and South Carolina who are really hard hit by the storm. So I want to encourage everyone who um, may have overprepared and have um, some extra flashlights or bottles of water uh, lying around your house to um, send those to folks who are more in need down east. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. I certainly overprepared. I think we all, all of us do. <laughs> all right. Any other announcements? If not, I'm going to turn to the priority items, uh, and I know that our city manager has a prior priority item for us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I don't have any official priority items this evening uh, related to the agenda, but I do want to take uh, just a moment of uh, personal privilege, if I can, to uh, talk a bit about the storm. Uh, certainly, we tried to... Uh, uh, keep the council, mayor and council, informed along the way. So I'm not going to go through all those details, but I do want to just mention, uh, without getting into the specifics, because I know I'll forget somebody and get in trouble, uh, just how proud I am and appreciative I am of all the departments and the city employees who uh, worked so hard over the last several days related to the storm, uh, both in preparation for the storm early or, or early and late last week, uh, trying to uh, to anticipate all of the worst case scenarios that fortunately we didn't experience, but we know others did, and prepare in so many ways uh, our facilities and uh, all of the, the things that uh, that we needed to have lined up so that if and when those uh, worst case scenarios came about, mm -hmm. we didn't have to stop and think about them. They were ready ready to move forward. Uh, and then certainly during the uh, the storm, uh, beginning uh, Thursday uh, through through Sunday. Uh, how the uh, departments and the staff certainly monitored what was going on 24 hours a day. We had staff at the Emergency Operations Center manning the Joint Information Center, uh, trying to anticipate uh, every turn, every movement, every possible wind scenario, rain scenario, uh, certainly uh, trying to do our best to inform the community of what uh, we knew and what uh, they might uh, anticipate and what they should do under certain situations. And then in a few situations, uh, also uh, responding, uh, fortunately, uh, it was mostly just to a few downed trees and things like that. Uh, and then uh, what we thought was going to be after the storm, but turned out to be our worst day was this morning. And uh, certainly the, uh, the staff, because of their preparation, they were able to, uh, to respond in certain situations, uh, provide a few rescues of people who were uh, stranded in some, some, uh, some rising water. Uh, responding to a, a number of infrastructure issues that uh, uh, several of which uh, are going to be with us for a while, two or three uh, fairly major um, uh, road closures that are that are going to have to be responded to and some other infrastructure issues, but certainly all things that we're very capable and prepared for. And then finally, uh, as, uh, as Council or the Mayor Pro Tem uh, uh, mentioned, you know, we know that uh, there are a number, numbers, countless numbers of communities and folks uh, who uh, have significant needs and I anticipate over the next uh, days and possibly weeks and months uh, Durham will be called upon to uh, to try and support their recovery and we certainly are prepared to do that. Uh, I would uh, just suggest uh, that you know if, if you do receive calls and uh, uh, from either uh, your constituents and other communities or, or organizations with good intentions, that we be sure and, and, and route all of those through the normal, the, the, the required protocols uh, that we make sure that, uh, you know, as requests come in, they can be vetted and they can be, uh, they can be triaged through the, uh, the state EOC system. So, but thank you very much. Again, I very appreciative of the departments, all of the employees and very proud to, uh, to be a part of, uh, of that response this weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manager, and uh, I appreciated the comments of Councilmember Austin and of the Mayor Pro Tem, and want to second that. I think we're all very proud of uh, how our employees did. Uh, uh, Councilmember Reese and I, and I believe a couple of our colleagues as well, uh, had the opportunity to visit the, uh, the shelter at Hillside uh, early on, and when people were just, thank you all for being here, 
Uh, we, got, we had the opportunity to, to visit the shelter and see how well organized that was. Uh, I also uh, paid a brief visit to the Emergency Operations Center, uh, which was uh, up early and ready, and um, thank you. And uh, so uh, I think we can all be very proud of, of the preparation that we had and very grateful uh, that, we, that it w wasn't necessary for us to uh, make use of that, uh, that preparation uh, in, the, in the way that we had feared. Thank you. So thank you. All righty, uh, and uh, Mr. Attorney, do any priority items? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, no priority items. All righty, uh, Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have no items. Thank you very much. All right. We are now going to turn to our consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda can be approved by a single vote of the Council. Uh, items, uh, uh, items that are, can be removed by uh, a Council member or a member of the public and then will be voted on separately at the end of the meeting. I'm going to read the consent agenda. Uh, item one, approval of city council minutes. Mm -hmm. Item three, Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners appointment. Item four, Human Relations Commission appointments. Item five, Recreation Advisory Commission appointment. Item six, Mayor's nominee for reappointment, Recreation Advisory Commission. Item seven, contract with Durham Community Land Trustees for the rehabilitation of 1700 Merrimack Street. Item eight, contract with Habitat for Humanity of Durham for the minor repair program. Item nine, this item can be found on the general <laughs> business agenda. Item 10, Memorandum of Agreement Establishing the Triangle Water Supply Partnership. Item 12, Utility Extension Agreement with Carillon Assisted Living of North Durham, LLC. Item 14, Sibiu, Roma Romania, Sister City Proposal. <laughs> item 17 to 21, these items can be found on the general business agenda, public hearings. Do I hear a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. We'll now move to our general business agenda, uh, where we'll be beginning with item 9, the ordinance to establish a permitting procedure to regulate the operation of shared active transportation companies within Durham. Do we have a staff report, or shall we simply start with the council? I'll recognize Council Member Reese. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have anybody sign up for this item tonight? I'll be doggone. I'm very glad you asked. I'm very glad I did, too. Uh, regulate the... Yes, we do. We have two speakers. I'm sorry. James Nishimuta and uh, Mr. Servano Esparza. And I apologize that for not recognizing that. Go ahead, Council Member Reese. Why don't you speak, and then we'll get them up here. Um, Mr. Mayor, I thought we might want to hear from them first. You want to hear from them first? That'd be, that'd be great. I'm enough. good with that. Thank you. Mr. Nishimuta and then um, Mr. Esparza. Please come to the microphone at my right, and you each have three minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is James Nishimuta. I live at 16 Sweet Bay Court. I'm on the board of Bike Durham, as some of you may know. Uh, we are an advocacy organization supporting bike lanes and a protected network in the city of Durham. And I just want to speak a little bit in support of this ordinance. Um, and then really coming from my personal history with, or personal experience with scooters. Um, so recently I lived in uh, California a couple years ago, moved three years ago, and then recently had a work trip back. And the amount of bike lanes they've put into San Jose has been enormous. And they've, I mean, it's pretty much every street has a bike facility on it. And they had the line bike scooters, so it was the first time I was able to use one. And it was fantastic. I went there for a work trip. I was a mile away from my hotel. I was able to spend the entire time without ever using a car. I took those trips on a scooter every day, and it was, it was a blast. I mean, you see these people riding, and their smiles, and those are miles that people would have otherwise been using in a car. Um, so I'm pretty sure, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that Durham has uh, signed on the Paris Climate Accord. If we want to be serious about climate change, and the recent hurricane is a reminder of you know, the cost of letting this be unchecked. The number one greenhouse emission is by transportation. 
So we need to do everything in our power to reduce vehicle miles tra traveled. We can do that by um, providing alternative transportations. Now, I know there is some history with um, the scooters and the NCGA um, classification as mopeds um, that I think Charlie um, will speak to a little bit later. But I think um, the city does have power here um, through two mechanisms. One is selective enforcement of those what I would call non-applicable laws. These are outdated laws that treat these electric scooters as a moped. This is not realistic. Riding one, you go slower than a bike, but we're mandating that they are treated as a vehicle. That doesn't make any sense logistically. Second is we can protect the individuals on these bikes by creating a protected network. And this means protected bike lanes um, with actual physical barriers to separate them from vehicles, from uh, cyclists or scooters, uh, as well as uh, low, vehicle, um, low speed neighborhood streets that go through the network. Uh, we can drastically change the, the way the city is shaped and we need to be serious about it. Mr. Nishimuta, thank you so much for your comments. And now we'll hear from Mr. Servano Esparza. You also have three minutes. Thank you. Mayor, City Council members, my name is Servando Sparza, and I'm Senior Manager of Government Relations for Bird, which is a scooter company, an e-scooter e company. Um, a little bit about uh, Bird is we provide a fleet of low-speed electric scooters that give people an affordable, reliable, and fun way to get around town. And so we're really excited in support of this ordinance. Um, I did want to mention a couple of notes that uh, we hope to work with you as um, the program progresses. Um, one of the notes is um, the fee for e-scooters is $100 per scooter. Um, and it's, it's one of the higher ones in, of, of all the cities that we're, we operate in. Um, but we understand that um, it is set so that uh, the city can recoup any costs in terms of, of operating the program. And so what we ask is that if, if the costs are not um, to, ma to maintain this program, are not that at that level that council can revisit this and potentially lower the fee if, if that's something that uh, is happening. Uh, one note on e-scooters is that they're actually collected every night to go to be charged, and so they don't sit out in the sidewalks um, like other potential vehicles. And so um, you we avoid some of the issues in terms of of leaving them out there, and then you have to of course um, redeploy them in the morning. Um, and so one of the things that we see in several cities is the parity in terms of fees with e-bikes. Uh, so that's something that the council can also consider as, um, as the program continues. Um, I wanted to also mention, because this is highlighted in the ordinance and we think is important, is that BIRD has a one BIRD program, which eliminates the dollar base fee per ride for anyone who's currently enrolled in or eligible for state or federal assistance program. Um, so that, that is incredibly helpful and we think is incredibly important. One of the, the concerns that I wanted to bring up, and it's, it's more that we're, what we're doing is implementing carrots and sticks so that our users show better behavior and then we deter someone from, from, from bad behavior. And one of those issues is that we can send, um, you know, um, we have to scan an ID to verify age because of course these vehicles require someone to be at least 18. And in BIRD we require you to, to scan your ID to make, make sure that that's uh, something that's happening. And then we actually ask our users to take a picture afterwards to show us that you actually parked legally, and that's an enforcement capability. And, and what I mentioned about this is that there's a component in here about um, smart, um, a non-smartphone option, and those type of enforcement you know, checks are not gonna be possible with that specific type of program. So it's just something to flag that as the program continues, that's something that we work on. Um, and then just wanted, as I mentioned, um, there's actually a provision uh, at, in one of the sections that um, a permit might be revoked uh, depending on the permittees customers operating the shared devices. Um, essentially, um, and I know it's seven seconds, we just keep, we would love to keep talking to you guys about the flexibility in place so that we make sure we have the tools available to, to uh, punish our users if they're not using it correctly and then uh, reward the ones that are using it um, in a safe manner. Thank you very much, Mr. Sparsa. We may have some questions for you, so thank you for being here. 
I'm going to now turn it over to Councilmember Reese. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate that. I want to appreciate the folks who came and talked about uh, the current draft ordinance. Um, I, uh, I agree with a lot of what both of you said tonight. Um, one thing that I've noted as I've gone through this process is that we um, we haven't heard from our, the Durham's, Durham's uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee about this ordinance. And I think uh, those are the folks in our community who we have, the city has asked to provide us with guidance on issues like this. I think whatever uh, form the ultimate shared act of transportation ordinance takes, it will impact uh, pedestrians and cyclists to a considerable degree. And I'd like to get their input. I reached out to staff last week and I shared that with uh, my colleagues in the council as well and um, would ask that we defer this matter so that we can hear from them, um, the hear from BPAC about this. The other issue I just wanted to raise just briefly um, was about enforcement, as one of our speakers mentioned. Uh, I think it would be interesting to hear uh, from the Durham Police Department about what they anticipate their enforcement posture will be for these devices if they're actually operated in the, in the street. Um, and if there's any way we could get some, uh, some input from our law enforcement agency, that would be great too. Thank you, council member. Um, you've heard the suggestion that we refer this back uh, to the administration so that the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee can uh, offer its review. Um, and so I'm interested in hearing thoughts from my colleagues. Council member Alston. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Council Member Reese, for your, for your work and um, your research on this issue. Um, I support referring this ordinance back to uh, BPAC to, uh, for their feedback. I think that that's really important. Um, I have a few questions, and uh, I forget your name, sir, but I just have a few questions, I think. Mr. Esparza. Esparza, thank you. Um, you mentioned uh, having users scan their IDs. Um, and forgive me if this is territory we've, that the Council's covered already, but. Um, do you mean driver's license specifically or any kind of ID that has an age, for, age on it? Any kind of official uh, author. Governmental ID. Governmental ID, yeah. Um, it's just to verify the um, actual age. Gotcha. Um, and just on the helmet issue, I, I saw that you would allow people to order a helmet. Can you just explain that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So what we do is... Um, we have a commitment to safety where we'll actually host uh, pop-up events where we just give helmets away. Or if any of our users in the markets that we operate wants a helmet, all we do is ask them to uh, pay a dollar ninety-nine cents, and we'll ship them a helmet. Okay. So if they wanted, if someone walked up to one and ordered a helmet, it would have to wait for the it, to, helmet to be, to be nailed. Shipped. I see. Yeah, because you uh, when you do it in the app, you, you give us your size. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other council members? Any comments? I would just like to say, uh, Mayor Shul, I also concur. Thank you. Thank you, Member Councilmember Freeman. So we have, uh, I, I'm going to, uh, I think we'll vote on it and make it official. I'll take a motion that we refer this back to uh, the administration. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we refer this back to the administration for further review, and that would include. Uh, the uh, review by the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Any more discussion? If not, Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Mr. Sparsa uh, and um, Mr. Nishimuta, just uh, you will want to be in contact with the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee to get your input uh, as they deliberate as well. Uh, I know you don't live here, and so you're, you're probably just should be aware of their meeting time and so forth, but our staff can help you become aware of that, okay? Thank you very much. And uh, Council Member Reese, thank you for all your work on this. Yeah. Wanted, just wanted to encourage my colleagues to, uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks, just take a trip over to Raleigh and give one of these a try. Please bring a helmet with you. Um, and I encourage you to stay off the sidewalk, but it's uh, it's very <laughs> instructive on the both the promise and the peril of these devices. Thank you. Try. Mr. Mayor, quick inquiry. Sure. Uh, I, I'm going to echo thanks to, to Councilman Reese, Yo, the yeoman, your person's job he's done on this uh, on this uh, undertaking. Just real real quickly, uh, 
the staff is going to ask the police to, to weigh in on this or give some type of advisory. And two, do we have any idea on the timetable as to when we'll revisit this? Um, I'm, I'm not sure when the next BPAC meeting is, but is it it's tomorrow? Okay, great. You guys got that? Uh, and so um, uh, it's tomorrow at 7. And so what I would anticipate is that they would be ready to I'm sure they've been following this issue, and I would anticipate they would be ready to offer some input. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I, I would say that not at this Thursday's uh, work session, but perhaps the work session two weeks from Thursday, we would anticipate coming back from us. Does that sound like a reasonable timetable, colleagues? Absolutely. Great. Okay. And I don't want to belabor this more than we have to. Yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, the police input, I think that uh, would, I'm sure I think it would be good if our staff talked to our police force about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All righty. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you all for being here to discuss that item. Um, we're now going to move to the general business agenda public hearings, and our first item is item 17, consolidated annex item for Salix Drive. <clears throat> Good evening, Jamie Sonyak with the Planning Department. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention that all planning public hearing items have been noticed in accordance with local and state law. Affidavits for the notice are on file in the Planning Department. <clears throat> this is uh, Salix Drive. Good evening. Um, requests for utility extension agreement, voluntary annexation, and zoning map change have been received from Salix Drive, LLC, for a 6.57 acre track. Mm -hmm. The subject site is located generally at 425 Scott King Road. The annexation petition seeks to bring two parcels into the city limits, um, the existing city limits. The subject site is presently zoned rural residential. The applicant is requesting a zoning designation of residential suburban 20. The parcels um, are currently designated as very low residential on the future land use map, which would be consistent with the zoning change. Approval of the annexation petition and zoning would become effective on September 30th, 2018. There's no development plan associated with this case. The public works and water management departments have determined that the existing water and sewer mains have the capacity for the proposed development the Budget and Management Service Department determined that the proposed annexation will become revenue positive immediately following the annexation, and additional information on those can be found in the staff report. The Durham Planning Commission <coughs> at their June 12, 2018 meeting recommended approval of the proposed um, residential suburban 20 zoning district by a vote of 11 to 0. Staff determines that these requests are consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. Three motions are required for this application. The first is uh, required by a law to approve the utility extension agreement and the voluntary annexation petition. The second is to adopt a consistency statement and the third is for the zoning ordinance. Thank you, Ms. Sonyak. You've heard the report of staff and I'm now uh, going to declare this public hearing open. And first, I'm going to ask if there are any questions or comments by members of the council for staff. Uh, just a quick question. I just want to verify. Mm -hmm. The prices or the included costs that are on page four, that is just $17 annually, or is that like $17 altogether forever? Pay, I'm sorry, page four of, of, the, staff the, report. of the memo? Of the staff report. The staff report. Is that right, Councilman? Hold on, let me go back. I'm looking at the left it. Memo. Page four of the, the memo. Page four of the memo. Where it's talking about public works and for planning. Is that like? Per year. Per year. The, well, the public, the public works one, that's the stormwater. So where it says additional general fund costs, approximately 855 associated with street maintenance, that's annually? Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? There's no one signed up to speak on this item, but I'm going to ask, this is a public hearing, is there anyone here to speak on this item? Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this item? Yes. Would you give us your name and address, please? Sean Gorman, 5011 South Park Drive here in Durham. I'm the applicant. Um, just 
here for any, any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Mormon. Any questions for the applicant? Any comments by members of the council? I'll ask again, is there anyone present who would like to speak on this public hearing item? If not, I'm gonna declare this public hearing closed and the matter is back before the council. Uh, I will uh, entertain a motion to adopt the ordinance annexing Salix Drive and entering into the utility extension agreement. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Now we need a motion to adopt the consistency statement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the consistency statement. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. The consistency statement passes 7-0. Thank you. And finally, we needed a motion to adopt the ordinance amending the Unified Development Ordinance. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt an ordinance to amend the UDO. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. UDO passes 7-0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you very much. All righty, we'll now move to item 18, the consolidated annexation, consolidated annexation item for Southeast Regional Lift Station. Um, good evening, Council. I'm Grace Smith with the Planning Department. This is a request to annex 26 acres of property at 4780 Kemp Road. The staff recommends an exact translation of zoning of RR, residential rule. While there's not a development plan with this uh, tract or associated with this request, the end uh, use for this site is for a sewer lift pump station, which you're probably aware of. If approved, the effective date of the annexation and the initial zoning would be effective on September 30th, 2018. If you have any questions, staff is available. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Ms. Smith. We haven't seen you up here at that microphone in a while. It's good to see you all, yes. Um, uh, you have heard the report from staff, and I'm now gonna declare this public hearing open, and I'm gonna ask if there are any questions or comments for staff uh, by members of the council. Any questions or comments for, for staff? If not, I have no one signed up to speak on this item, but I'm going to ask, is there anyone here who would like to speak on this public hearing item tonight? Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? Any questions or comments from, from council? If not, I'm gonna declare this public hearing closed and the matter is back before the council. Uh, to, this item will also require three different uh, motions. Uh, the first will be to adopt an ordinance annexing the, S, the, uh, the Southeast Regional Lift Station into the city. So uh, moved. It's, uh, there's, uh, has it been second? Can I hear, hear a second? It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the ordinance annexing the S Southeast Regional Lift Station into the city of Durham. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Ordinance passes 7-0. Thank you. We'll now need a motion to adopt a consistency statement. So Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt a consistency statement. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Consistency statement passes 7-0. Thank you. And now the motion to adopt the ordinance amending the UDO. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Ms. Smith, you did a bang up job in your presentation. You can see it was extremely convincing. Uh, we'll now move to item 19, Christian Avenue Street Closing. Mr. Mayor, could I uh, sure. ask uh, Mr. Young to confirm, I believe that this matter has uh, been withdrawn by the applicant, but I'm not certain if because it's an advertised public hearing, we need to open the public hearing and close it or how to, how to handle that procedurally. So is that correct, Pat? It is. Uh, good evening, Pat Young with Planning Department. L late last week, the applicant withdrew this item, so we would ask that it be referred back to the administration. We would have to defer to the city attorney about whether need or not the public hearing needs to be opened or not, but I believe it can just be referred back uh, without opening the item since it's been withdrawn. But I, of course, would, would defer to the city attorney. That's, that's correct. And my understanding is we've done that in the past with the applicant. Um, 
I ask for the, the, the item to be referred back so we can do that. All right, thank you. So um, can I just ask, Pat, is this the item planning to come back to us or you don't know that? I think it's likely that it will. Um, this is part of a planned redevelopment, and yeah. there was some question between the owner and the adjacent owner about okay. the, the location of the, of the uh, right. property division. So it's likely to come back to you, but it may be several months, and they no one wanted to commit to a date certain, so which is why we're asking for it to be referred back. Thank you very much. All right, this item has been withdrawn and uh, referred back to the administration. I don't believe we need a motion on that, do we, Mr. Attorney? Okay, so item 19 has been withdrawn and was referred back to the administration. Uh, and now um, item 20, consolidated annex item, annexation item, triple A storage. Good evening, Jamie Sonyak with the Planning Department. Requests for utility extension agreement Voluntary annexation and zoning map change have been received from Tony Tate LLC for a 7.13 acre track. The subject site is located generally at 750 and 804 Junction Road. This annexation petition seeks to bring one of the parcels, which is 1.1, or I'm sorry, 1.01 acres into the existing city limits. The subject site is presently zoned industrial light and RS or residential suburban 20. The applicant is requesting a zoning designation of industrial light with a development plan. The parcels are currently designated as industrial on the future land use map, which would be consistent with the zoning change. Approval of the annexation and zoning would become effective on September 30th, 2018. Key commitments associated with this plan include limiting the use to self-storage facilities and limiting the height of the building to two stories. Um, the public works and water management departments have determined that the existing water and sewer have the capacity for the proposed development. The budget department and management services department uh, determined that the proposed annexation will become revenue positive immediately following the annexation. Additional information can be found in the staff report. The Durham Planning Commission at their July 10th meeting of 2018 recommended approval of the proposed industrial light with a development plan um, by a vote of 12 to zero. Staff determines that these requests are consistent with the comprehensive plan, applicable policies and ordinances. Three motions are required for this application. The first um, is required by law to approve the utility extension agreement and the voluntary annexation petition. The second is to adopt a consistency statement, and the third is required for the zoning ordinance. I'll be happy to any, answer any questions that you have. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ms. Sonyak. Uh, council members, you have heard the report from staff. I'm going to declare this public hearing open. Uh, and first, I'm going to ask, are there any comments or questions from council members for staff? So, council member Freeman? I'm not sure. I'm trying to place this location because I think I have driven around there. And I just wanted to know if there were any flooding issues in this in this section of the of Junction Road. If there were any flooding issues on that road over there, I uh, am not familiar personally with any flooding issues. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking at my colleagues, and they are also saying no. Okay. Was Junction Road I know that's closed left. today uh, for flooding? I don't think we have anybody here, Mr. Mayor. That I don't. I didn't see it on the list. Yeah. So that I think, since it's not on the list, I think that'd be a good indication. I would not. If it didn't flood today, it probably didn't flood. I would not trust the list. The list is a little old, and it did not reflect some of the roads that have been identified within the last three days. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Manager. Uh, Ms. Sonia, could you confirm it? So they have submitted a site plan or not? At this time, I am not aware that they have. So that's the process, really, though, that they would, you know, the next step for them would be to submit some kind of a development site plan or site plan. At that point, they would evaluate all that's of correct. the conditions associated with floodplains and uh, stormwater requirements. And that's I correct. Just, they would be held to all the standards in the UDL. And if it was in the floodplain or whatever, they, they would, would not be able to. Uh, Absolutely. Build. How do you how do you address it if it's not in the floodplain, but maybe maybe due to other properties that there's runoff from those properties coming in? Those are evaluated as a part of the uh, site plan review process. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Councilmember Caballero? Just, I'm just curious, and I think the same folks may be here, but um, 
just looking at the BPAC comments and about the sidewalk, if that has changed, if there has been any change on that. The, the, so the, there was a... They're not, not interested in adding that um, piece of asphalt for a future bike lane. Yeah. Why don't we wait on that and just okay. let's first ask if there are any comments for staff and then we can ask the applicant. Uh, any other comments or questions for staff? Okay. We have one person uh, to sign up to speak on this item, Pam Porter. Ms. Porter, uh, if you could come to this microphone to my right and... Um, I'm going to initially give you three minutes, and there may be some questions for you as well. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Pam Porter, 5011 South Park Drive. I'm with Tony Tate Landscape Architect. Our office prepared the development plan for the rezoning. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have, and just to um, touch on uh, Ms. Freeman's question, there are no, there's no floodplain on this site, and it's indicated on the development plan. It's not floodplain. I'm concerned about that Junction Road section, if there was flooding in that area. Correct. But I just wanted to make a note that there is no floodplain on this site, just as an FYI, because flooding is a concern now that we just had the hurricane come through. Yeah. I want to be careful that we're, we're mindful that the floodplain maps were prior to a lot of clear cutting and grading that has shifted a lot of water around. So I'm just going to be asking that question frequently. No, understood, understood. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Caballero, you have a question for the applicant? Yeah, I was just looking at uh, the bike and pet advisory um, and then just was wondering if you all were standing firm about the bike lane. The, the client is declining that at this moment, yeah. Okay. Other questions or comments for the applicant? Ms. Porter, did you have anything else to add? No, nope, just thank you for your consideration mm -hmm. of our project. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant or any other questions or comments for staff? Mr. Mayor, just real quick, just I'm, tr I'm trying to orient myself. Is I'm sorry, I, your name is Steven. I'm sorry. Ms. Porter. Ms. Porter, is this, is this the piece of Junction Road between 98 and Cheek or Cheek and Club? You know, Junction is kind of bifurcated by the, the yeah. train tracks. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, I believe this is south of the train tracks. There's, there's an aerial attachment, I think attachment three maybe. That would help, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to get to that too. I was looking at the... Uh, it's, it the vicinity map on my development plan doesn't go that far, so I could be mistaken. Got it. I see it, thank you. You're welcome. Do you see, is Councilmember Middleton, did you find I'm, out what you I'm need satisfied. to do? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, um, Mr. Manager. Mm -hmm. I know this is an area you're f very familiar with. I have some familiarity with it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, council members, any more questions or comments? This is a public hearing, and uh, uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak on this item? Is there anyone else here tonight who would like to speak on this item? If not... Um, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed, and the matter is back before the council. We'll leave three uh, motions here uh, to uh, complete this item. One would be to adopt an ordinance annexing AAA storage into the city and to uh, enter into this utility, authorize entering into these utility extension agreement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Close the vote. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Uh, now we need a motion to adopt the consistency statement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the consistency statement. Madam Clerk, could you open the vote, please? Close the vote. Consistency statement passes 7-0. Thank you. And finally, a motion to adopt the ordinance amending the UDO. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, could you please open the vote? Please close the vote. Ordinance passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and uh, Ms. Sunyak, thank you for your work. We appreciate it. And you, you do a great job up here every, every, every two weeks, so we appreciate you. Thank you. 
Uh, and now we'll move to item 21, the Case Street 2 closing. Good evening. Uh, Carla Rosenberg with the Planning Department. Um, so Jeff Williams, on behalf of Coulter Jewel Thames, request to permanently close a 330 linear portion, uh, linear foot portion of K Street. And this is the portion that is above or north of Highway 147. Um, the K Street one was before you a couple months ago and approved. This portion of K Street is an unimproved platted right of way maintained by the city. J Boy LLC owns three parcels located immediately to the west of this right of way and Ventas Pettigrew LP owns the parcel directly to the east. If closed, the right-of-way will be combined with these adjacent properties as shown on the associated street closing plat in attachment four of the staff report. The request meets applicable ordinance requirements and all comments generated during the review process have been addressed. So the staff recommendation is to um, recommend, we recommend the permanent closure of this 330.08 linear foot portion of Case Street. Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. Nice to see you here tonight as well. Um, you have heard the report from staff, and I'm now going to declare this public hearing open and first ask if there are any comments or questions for staff by members of the council. Just a, just council a verification. This area near the rail, railway, would that have any bearing on the light rail project? The light rail will go through. That, that right of way is planned for the light rail project. Uh, Bill Judge Transportation, the uh, proposed light rail alignment is along Pettigrew, just north of the, the closure. And, and it's aerial in this, this section. It's aerial in this section? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there any housing located in this section either as well? Um, they're mainly commercial. De, uh, development along that section of Pettigrew Street. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for staff? I have no one signed up to speak on this item, but I will ask now, is there anyone here who would like to speak on item 21, K Street 2 closing? Is there anyone in the audience here tonight who would like to speak on this public hearing item? Any other questions or comments from staff, from council members? If not, I'm going to declare this public hearing closed. The matter is back before the council, and I'll accept a motion to uh, adopt an order to permanently closing uh, this portion of K Street. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk, will you please open the vote? Please close the vote. The order passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Colleagues, colleagues this is does the... Uh, last item to come before us tonight and subsequently I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned at 756. Thank you very much. Excellent work tonight, Mr. Mayor. <laughs>